new motherboard, or existing motherboard. This video isn't a review of the 5600X3D per se, but instead aims to answer the question, do you need to buy a newer motherboard for a 3D Vcache processor upgrade? Or can you just drop it into an older board? Well, maybe not this board exactly, as I record this in late August 2023, Biostar has yet to release a BIOS for this board that's newer than May 2022. I did actually install the 5600X3D into this board just to see what would happen. It ran at base clocks only, no turbo at all. However, my PCI Express test bench is using an ASUS Prime A320MK, which does include a BIOS with 5800X3D and therefore 5600X3D support. The board I'm testing against will be the motherboard that Micro Center is bundling with this processor, the ASUS TUF B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2. What a name. So we have basically the lowest and highest end variants of the AMD Promontory chipset. Remember, X570 is technically a different chipset. But will there be a performance difference? There are certainly feature differences between the two boards, but the primary specs, 16 PCI Express lanes to the GPU, DDR4 XMP support, are identical. The B550 will get PCI Express 4.0, of course, and I'll be testing with that enabled. Uh, both boards can use resizable bar, which will also be on for testing. For a GPU, I'm using the Radeon 6650 XT, 8GB, not the fastest card for sure, and it's meant that I've needed to find some creative solutions to eliminate GPU bottlenecks in some of the tests, but overall, I think the data is solid. I'm running five tests, all looking at CPU performance only, so graphical settings have been dialed back far enough to drop the GPU's render load under 90%. All set? Bottoms up. Let's start with emulation. When I tested the 5800X 3D, I found that it was incredibly fast for doing DOS PC emulation using DOSBox. This is no different with the 5600X 3D, and both motherboards allow the chip to absolutely rip through the Quake benchmark included in Phil's Computer Lab's DOS Bench Suite, available in the link in the description. This is frames per second at 640x480. You can see both boards return over 103 FPS, just absolute rockets. So looking good so far. Up next is Satisfactory. I'm running Update 8 Experimental, 720p medium preset, lowest resolution scale possible. This results in a terrible image, but only about 80% GPU usage on the 6650, indicating that we've eliminated the GPU bottleneck. This ends up yielding 224 FPS on the B550 board and a margin of error 227 FPS on the A320. Just incredible numbers. When I tested the 5800X3D, it really loved Unreal Engine 4 games, and it looks like the 5600X3D and Unreal Engine 5 is no different. Up next, we'll be looking at Beam and G Drive. This is a new test in the suite, and I'm not actually sure if Beam benefits from 3D Vcache, but it has a built-in physics benchmark that stresses out a CPU pretty effectively, so I gave it a go. Here you can see the 5600X3D is good for over 390 million beams per second on both boards, again, slightly more on the A320 board. Now this benchmark I know doesn't use 3D Vcache. In fact, I'd be surprised if this test touched level 3 cache at all. Cinebench R23 Multicore is basically a VRM stress test. When run for 10 minutes, the B550 board is finally able to differentiate itself with a score of 10,462 versus the A320 board's 10,265. It's not a ton, but the wins aren't over for the B550. Up next is VR Chat on my Vive Pro at minimum resolution scale. In the Blender Classroom benchmark world, the B550 scored 37 FPS, while the A320 scored 31. And in After Dark Plaza's recently completed casino area, one of the more demanding areas in the map, the B550 board also takes the crown with 75 FPS versus the A320 72 FPS. So, does it make sense to spend extra cash on a motherboard upgrade if you're considering a top end AM4 processor with Vcash? I don't think so. Neither the 5800X3D nor the 5600X3D are particularly punishing on a board's voltage regulation circuitry. So unless you're missing some features you'd like in a newer board, I, I think it's perfectly fine to save your money and just plop that new CPU right onto your existing motherboard. Once you update your BIOS, of course. <laughs> Always check the website of your motherboard's manufacturer before buying a new CPU. 
but in most cases you should be fine to upgrade. And these, these Vcash CPUs are rockets. They're really quite fast. If you've been considering an upgrade, you're on first gen or second gen Ryzen, I can heartily recommend them. That's it for this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and maybe even a subscribe if you're feeling generous. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video, and may the PC parts be ever in your favor. Have a good night.